morning. Did you sleep well last night? Today, I would like to talk about right rest and sleep. This will be the last part of the five right ways to health. I realized that rest is a huge topic that I cannot deliver at once. So today, I will focus more on sleep and some other that can support your sleep. Master Desang, the third head Dharma master of warm Buddhism, included that right rest and sleep is also critical for a healthy mind and body, along with the other four right ways. Our body has its own vitality to maintain harmony and balance between yin and yang and qi energy and blood. The proper rest and sleep are essential factors in restoring the vitality of our body. In particular, excessive overwork and stress can cripple the function of the human body and in severe cases, even turn into a disease. It is necessary to have a good night's sleep after engaging in strenuous or stressful activity during the day. We need the time to rebuild our cells and organs. Rest is not laziness or a useless waste of time, but rather is fundamental to our health and survival. With a proper rest, we can relax, refresh our energy, and recover strength. Master Jwasan, the fourth head Dharma master of one Buddhism, stressed that a well-balanced life of action and rest is necessary for healthy mind and body. A balanced lifestyle with moderate action and proper rest is crucial to your well-being. Everything in the world springs up new forces through action. If you just stay still without any activity, your energy will gradually run out. As you move your body, the circulation of qi and blood becomes better. However, once all your energy is worn out because of too much work or activity, you can hardly regain your strength again. That is why we should not always use up our mental and physical energy, but reserve some. It is like when you always keep some money in your saving account, or a farmer always keep seed for next year. When you feel tired, it is time you must rest. If fatigue accumulates, your immune system will deteriorate and eventually develop into a disease. If you properly manage action and rest, you can maintain your vitality. A healthy person usually takes a rest according to his or her physical needs, regardless of time and place. But the only thing to be careful about is always being lazy and wanting comfort. This drains one's own vitality. It is not called right rest. I'd like to share a story. It is one of Aesop's fables, The Ant and the Grasshopper. I think everyone knows it. It was summer, hot and sunny, and instead of working and preparing for the winter, a grasshopper preferred to dance, sing, and play his violin at his leisure. 
not minding that these wonderful days will soon be over, that cold and rainy days will soon be near. On seeing a hard-working ant passing by him, preparing for the hard winter, he invited him to join him in play. Unfortunately, I don't have time for this, the ant answered. I must work hard so that winter won't find me without shelter and food. Stop worrying so much. Let us sing and dance together. Let's laugh and enjoy life. But Ant was very wise and wouldn't pay attention to the grasshopper's word and continued to work very hard. The winter came sooner than expected and the grasshopper found himself without shelter and food. He went to the ant house and begged him for help. I'm sorry, but I can't help you, the ant said. I only have room and food for me and my family. So go find help somewhere else. I should have followed the ant example in the summer, the grasshopper thought sadly. I would have been so happy now. Most parents and teachers told this, this story to kids to teach them the value of hard work and labor. However, I would say that the ant need to learn a little more the value of taking a break and relaxing, while the grasshopper needs to learn the value of labor and preparing for the future. They all need a little more of a balance. We live in the work-rest-sleep work, cycle. If this cycle is harmoniously balanced, that is called a healthy life. Proper sleep is the most important to restore your energy and strength. If you do not sleep well, you will feel tired, dizzy, and less able to work. If you sleep well, you will feel refreshed. Your brain becomes clear, and your nervous system, endocrine system, metabolism, digestive function, vascular activity, and breathing function are improved. These promote growth activity of each tissue and enhance immunity. So the oriental medicine said earlier that sleep is a natural medicine. How is the sleep condition? Do you sleep well? Let's consider some precautions for proper sleep. Is your room sleep environment comfortable enough? Noise, lighting, room temperature, pillow, bedding, etc. What about your physical condition? Avoiding being too hungry or overeating before bed. A cup of warm milk is good if you can't sleep because of your hungry. Avoid any stimulant such as coffee, caffeine drinks, alcohol, and tobacco. Alcohol changes the sleep cycle and tobacco excites the central nerve system. Regular and proper exercise is good, but exercising at night is rather disturbing your sleep. Avoid too much stress and overwork. Try to relax as much as possible at night to avoid excitement and tension. Master Tae San said, Chon Yagi means to nourish the energy of night and to cultivate the true nature. 
Everything seems to grow during the day, but it actually grows at night. At night, it is better to shut down your sixth sense organs and also dim the light. Do not watch TV too late at night. The only thing you need to do is to reflect on what you've done during the day and relax. Tanjon breathing is also good before bed. Lying down and being aware of the low abdomen and breathing. Or you can chant. This helps you relax and empty your thought. In my bed, I keep meditation bead nearby. It has 108 beads. I chant silently, turning the bead one by one. I fall asleep while I'm chanting. Sleep is important. Since you are active during the day, you should rest and get enough sleep at night, except for unavoidable circumstances. Just as the sun rises in the morning and sets in the evening, human body operates according to the principles of nature. One of the reasons why people cannot sleep well as they get older is when they get tired only in the head, not in the body. It is also helpful for a good night's sleep to cause adequate fatigue with moderate labor or exercise during the day. If you sleep well enough at night, you may not need much rest during the day. But sleep only is not enough for your rest. Then napping helps you rest. This is about a short, brief nap. A long nap more than one hour may disturb your sleep at night. One of the times we tend not to perform so well is in the early and to mid-afternoon. However, we can break through that sense of sluggishness, fatigue, and work inefficiency by taking a short nap. We don't even have to sleep. Just lying down and getting a rest can help a lot and can increase mental and physical performance for the rest of the day. You can take a nap in your office sitting in a chair. A couch or a sofa is often more comfortable for a nap. Short naps can do more than increase work productivity. Even a six-minute nap can improve memory and problem solving. According to Dr. Matthew Adland, who is a renowned sleep and rest doctor, there are some excellent reasons to nap. Here are a few. First, napping might save your life. A six-year study of Greek adults completed in 2007 found that those who took 30-minute naps at least three times a week cut their heart attack risk 37%. Second, you will work better. One NASA study found naps averaging 26 minutes improved work performance on some tasks by 38%. Third, you will feel better. You, your mood often rises when you take naps. Fourth, you will deal with people more effectively. I wake up early around 4.40 in the morning, so I feel like I need a rest after lunch. I try to take a nap about 15 to 30 minutes in between 1 to 1.30 p.m. When I don't have enough time, I just lie down with my arms and legs stretched out 
and rest for about five minutes. It really helps. I hope you try. If you don't have even five minutes and cannot find a place for a nap, there is another way that helps you relax even in one minute. Deep breathing helps us rest anywhere, anytime, in ways that restore us, calm us, relax us, and make us a lot. To understand the benefit of deep breathing, let me share some heart and lung physiology. Much of your lower region of your lung is collapsed. Is the effect of gravity. Gravity presses down on the lungs and collapses their lower parts. Breathing a bit deeper fills up more of the lungs, so your lung capacity expands with more air and more oxygen. With each beat, the right side of your heart pumps blood into your lungs. The entire left ventricle of your heart is reserved to pump blood everywhere else. But the whole job of the right ventricle of your heart is to send blood to the lungs. As the blood reaches the lungs, it eventually has to travel down from arteries to arterioles to capillaries. Like water flowing, from a river into a stream and then into a tiny trickle. Eventually, the blood cells reach the spherical sacs called alveoli, which are specially designed to fill up with air. The oxygen in that air then gets picked up through the superseen world capillaries of your lungs filling the red blood cells inside your capillaries with the oxygen that keeps you alive. If part of your lungs are collapsed, the blood is not oxygenated. Much of the blood going to the base of your, your lungs and then wasted. However, if you breathe deeply, you can open up some of those collapsed air spaces fill the alveoli with air, and the blood coursing through will pick up the oxygen it needs. That blood will then go into the left side of your heart and get pumped everywhere else in your body, keeping you healthy. As you can see, it really worthwhile to take a deep breath. Just a few breaths taking less than one minute can help you accomplish opening up the base of your lungs to give better circulation, relax your body, concentrate your focus on what your body does in ways that let you both appreciate it and enjoy it and find a way to that takes seconds and can be used virtually anywhere and anytime. Now, let us practice together. Please sit up straight in your seat. Uncross your legs if you are sitting in a chair. If your chair has arms, lay your arms along their length. If the chair lacks arms, let your arms fall loosely. Now you can close your eyes. Breathe in deeply through your nose. And breathe out slowly through your mouth. Allow your mind and body fully relaxed. As you breathe in, 
feel your belly rising. As you breathe out, falling. Exhalation is longer than inhalation. This helps release tensions and toxins in your body. As you breathe, try to breathe more slowly and evenly. You can count the time of your breath as you breathe in and out. For example, breathe in one, two, three, four. Breathe out one, two, three, four, five, or more. Feel the movement of your abdomen, chest, and shoulders as you breathe. You can continue. You can do deeper and slower. Find your own rhythm. Now open your eyes. Deep breathing lets us relax and focus and concentrate in order to really rest. As your breathing becomes more efficient, you will feel more relaxed. So far, I talked about some forms of rest such as sleep, napping, and deep breathing. I think they are the most required and we can easily do it in everyday life. Finally, I would like to add one more shortly that you can think about it. It is called the practice of one suchness in action and rest. This means we keep our true nature when we use our mind and body or when we are at rest. When we are at rest, we cultivate our true nature. When we are working, we apply the state of our true nature, doing things in proper order. Therefore, the work can be done successfully and we can keep calm and stillness. The founding master said, when you are not busy, prepare the things you will do for when you are busy. And when you are busy, keep the state of mind of your free hours. If we are prepared in advance when we are in free time, it becomes easier when we work. And we can keep the stillness of our true nature. And also when we are busy, it is practice to keep a calm and leisurely mind by handling the work in proper order rather than being tied to the immediate situation. This is the practice of rest in action and action in rest. To sum up all the five right ways to health I've talked until today, it's the middle way and balance. We should manage our health based on the principle of the middle way and balance throughout breathing, food, movement, or exercise, mind, emotions, and rest. If there is too much, reduce some. If there is too little, feel more. Especially try to do it in reverse and different way to be balanced. Eating food when you've not been eaten. Exercising in ways you have not tried before and changing your posture to something you don't normally do. For example, if you are right-handed, 
try to use left hand more. It sounds a little trivial, but it is a very wise way to maintain your health and to prevent illness. It is also a fundamental remedy you can do in your daily life. I hope everyone lives healthier and happier through this practice. Thank you. Thank you.